Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. Uh, when I'm not doing this podcast, I am a trans woman by the name of May Lynn. Yes, yes, a little about the urban achievers, and proud we are of all of that. This is episode 430, The Triumphant Return. And our last episode, episode 429, was published near the end of December of last year, 2021. We discussed President Biden <coughs> and the Ice Cream Bunny and the movie Nightmare Alley, which you didn't like, Bunny? What? No! Well, let me just fill you in on that snag that it sounded like you didn't hear about. That Zoom has like changed its policy, so they cut meetings off after 40 minutes. So every 40 minutes, we're going to have to restart Zoom until we find an alternative of some sort. But anyway, uh, I, I found it boring. I found it predictable. I found it pretty much gave away its ending really early. Yeah, I felt that if I hadn't watched Tom Browning's Freaks, that it would be more surprising to me. Yeah. But I felt that it owed a lot for that. Uh, I just thought it was, I thought it was, you know, it, there, there's, there aren't a lot of freak show noir films out there. I dug it. I thought it was good. Anyway, okay. So shortly after that episode dropped, I went MIA for a while, for a couple of months. Now, I don't want to get into it, and I don't want to talk about why I went MIA, but when I finally did come back down to Earth, I was really worried about how do I explain to people what happened to me, what do I say, how do I explain it. But here's a plus. Being trans, buddy. Yeah. You might not know such a high rate of suicide, and it's so hard to be trans physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically. Plus, there's the pressure of being trans during an election year when Republicans don't have a caravan of illegals. Yes. So, they're focusing on transphobia as being the leading cause of all of our nation's problems, so just being trans is a widely dangerous so all of these reasons, the mental struggle, the danger, the risk of suicides, the difficult toll physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, all of this comes together, it basically gives me a massive amount of leeway in the mental breakdown department. Yes. Which is a real comfort, you know? It's, it, it's, a, it's comforting to know that tomorrow I could shave my head, get naked, cover myself in the uh, and go into a Dollar General and say, I am the very model of a modern major general, and people would go, oh, she's trans, it's okay. Hey, why don't you come over here and get <laughs> some tea? How are you feeling? Are you okay? Here's a blanket. <laughs> so, so that's good. So nothing's happened between now and December 22nd, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. No, we're... We're, we're, we're just closer to apocalypse. Uh, we, we may have picked up the pace some, you know? Uh, it's a fucking hellhole. It's a hellhole, and it's just getting worse. It's just getting worse, and there is nobody, nobody who, who has any kind of power who gives any kind of fuck. And I, I'm done with all of them. Yeah, it's a bit upsetting. I still haven't gotten over the fact that Betty White died. Uh, myself, uh, Milo died. I thought that for the symmetry of the thing, because I'm a real big Rocky Horror Picture Show fan, I thought that Tim Curry should have eaten Milo's corpse. Yes. And do we know that he didn't? 
point. Yeah. You do not know that. Uh, suddenly it's popular for young people to be reading Bram Stoker's Dracula. Really? I missed that part. Right now, there's this thing, and it's called, uh... Dracula a day, or daily Dracula, and basically, uh, like you sign up for this thing and it sends you a little bit of the book a day, and a bunch of young people are reading it and making TikToks about it, and Mal's reading it right now, it's really surprising. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to, uh, to see young people caring about vampires again, Mal said to me. So is Bram Stoker's Dracula supposed to be this gay? And I'm like, honey, you have to sit down and let me show you <laughs> Interview with a Vampire. <laughs> you will be so pleased. Yeah. At the level of gaiety in this film. So, uh, uh this is the monologue, sort of pre form, sort of like a combination <sighs> of the monologue we did pre MIA. Well, okay, but before, yes, I do. Yes, I do. But the one last thing that happened while we were off that needs to be addressed because I know why it happened. And anybody saying anything different is full of shit. Will Smith smacked Chris Rock in the Oscars. There is only one reason possible for that to have occurred. The National Academy of Arts and Science did that to get me to watch the Oscars next year, hoping for another slap. But it ain't going to happen because I'm on to your little fucking tricks. The crazy thing is that their Oscar ratings are down every year. Oscar ratings get lower and lower and lower. So I imagine that when Will Smith stood up and slapped Chris Rock, that uh, the people behind the Oscars started acting like uh, Bill Hicks. Uh, there is a God. He loves us all so much. So yeah. They were probably pretty <coughs> with themselves. Do you want me to change the camera? Going you always right want about George Carlin and suddenly not... everyone gives a shit about him? That sort of upsets me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, suddenly it's cool to like George Carlin. Okay. Yeah. Well, he, he he did he did break with the whole with the whole Roe v. Wade thing, and we were, we had the, like the best sound clip that we had fucking available. We had to go back twenty years to get off of George Carlin again. I just want to live in a world that Bill Hicks and George Carlin, George Carlin would be proud to live in. I don't think that's not much to ask. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am not sure if if that world exists, unfortunately. Yeah. But yes. So, yeah. So so. There's that. There's the Oscars. There's there's, uh, the whole, the whole. You know making women second class citizens again thing you know uh and again like, like there's like right now there is not a single politician that you could that you could name that I can't say fuck that person about I'm tired of all of them yeah, Bernie you're supposed to be pushing them to the left what the fuck are you doing yeah and by the time we get to the end of this week's historic approximation, I will be giving everybody a brand new reason to say, fuck you, Supreme Court. So, that's exciting. Okay. All new reason to hate the Supreme Court. Oh, okay. I, I, I am curious. I, good one. With the little pieces that I have, I do not see how they fit together to that. But yes, so so you want to just knock this out of the park with what I was planning on doing, so we can uh, go on. So yes, in in my 
desperation, frankly, because I don't see anything else to do, I'm going to give Nancy Pelosi a call and give her a little bit of my mind. She's got the phone. See, I wrote it all out. So I can't, I can't be seeing myself while I'm doing this. And the glasses have got to go on. And how do we dial out on these damn newfangled things? Where's the curly cord? I miss the cords. I do. I miss pay phones. Yes. Yeah, pay phones, especially the big stand-up booth ones. Those were always fun as shit when I was a kid. And yes, playing Superman. Mm-hmm. Yes. We got rid of the pay booths. And truth, justice, and the American way left. All right, so we're dialing Nancy. Now, you know we're not going to get her. We're only getting the voicemail. Thank you for calling the Office of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. We value hearing from you. To listen to this menu in English, please stay on the line. Para la prensa española cinco. If you would like to voice your opinion, share feedback, or pass along your personal story to Speaker Pelosi, please press 1. Thank you for calling the Office of Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. As a constituent of California's 12th District, your views are very important to us. Please leave your comments at the tone. Was that a tone? Okay. Speaker Pelosi. I am calling to inform you that I will not be voting Democratic until I see the, a party that actually fights for its principles instead of paying lip service to them. I will encourage others who look to you with the last vestiges of hope do the same. You have done nothing but crush that hope time and again. Let this stand as a vote of no confidence in the Democratic Party. You use our pain for fundraising and give us excuses instead of action. You ignore the reasons why you were given the power and vote with you ignore the reasons why you were given power and vote with the fascists destroying this country. Mitch McConnell pushes for a national abortion ban and you will fundraise as the only ones who can stop him, but history has shown that even if you win the majority again, Mitch will be the real winner. He will bring his bill to the floor, and you'll vote for it, just as you voted for every tax cut for the rich. You might want to say I'm wrong, but that begs the question why the DNC is endorsing anti-abortion candidate Henry Cuellar over pro-choice... Okay, so I think I, I think I got cut off with Nancy Pelosi. So this is like this is like a little preview of what's going to go on with Zoom. Okay, so the Zoom meeting's going to run out. We'll just restart the Zoom meeting, just like I'm just going to call back Nancy. While you call Nancy and go through that, I'll just be singing. I'll just sing songs to people to uh, cheer them up. Uh, I would now like to sing the song the Beatles, the Beatles that were recorded. We value I will not sing all of Hey Jude. Alright, quit singing. We're going back. From a Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, as a constituent of California's 12th District, your views are very important to us. Please leave your comments at the tone. Speaker Pelosi, to continue. You might want to say I'm wrong, but that begs the question as to why the DNC is endorsing anti-abortion candidate Henry Cuellar over pro-choice Jessica Cisneros. You're so funny. Simply, you're lying to us. I've seen Russian citizens speak out against the war in Ukraine. 
two police officers show up and each gently take an elbow and then guide the citizen over to a nearby police van. In stark contrast to Americans protesting police brutality, we get flashbanged, tear gassed, shot with rubber bullets, pulled off the streets, and thrown into unmarked vans, driven off to God knows where. And what did the Democratic Party do? You dressed in African garb, knelt, and then didn't do another goddamn thing. Biden wants more funding for the police? Why? So they can afford more body armor, tanks, and offensive weapons to use against the American people? Shame on you. You can attack your citizens with military force, but you can't do anything about the January 6th insurrectionists who... They, they, they don't listen to the voice messages. They really don't l read their emails. <laughs> so, all right, call in Nancy back. Speaker Pelosi, to continue, shame on you. You can attack your citizens with military force, but you can't do anything about the January 6th insurrectionists who are in our government right now. Law laws are not for the elite, as your insider trading attests to. Laws are only for us little people. As for mansion and cinema are concerned, I could do without the scapegoating. All it shows is that the Democrats, the Democrats cannot even beat the Democrats, let alone the Republicans. Trump and his gang of traitors still roam free. You failed getting us a pitiful $15 minimum wage. You failed several times on Build Back Better. You failed women and their reproductive rights. You failed brown kids in cages who are still there. You failed on voting rights. You failed on student debt. Failure after failure after failure. And you failed on trans people. But good luck looking for UFOs, I guess. Ta-da! <laughs> and 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 of course we all know that this doesn't do a goddamn thing anyway just like voting does it's it's so funny like the DNC just yesterday I saw it popped up on face bill record month record month fundraising ever you're not going to do anything you you're, you're going to tell us you're going to do shit you're going to tell us you're going to fight for women's reproductive rights, but you're not. You have the fucking majority right now. Right now. What are you, what are you going to do when you have less power? And it really comes down to is that the fucking filibuster is more important than women. I mean, Christ, Biden can sign an executive order. 
I don't see that happening either. I mean, this is a huge fucking ass deal. This is no little ass shit. You know? Half of the people are going to be less. By law. By, By fucking law. You know? Not just the shitty way we treat each other. (laughs) <laughs> you know, yeah. it's ridiculous. Before before uh, we get kicked <laughs> off of Zoom and before we move on to another segment, uh, I stopped going to movies for a few months there. Yeah. But now now I'm back. So what I wanted to do is a little lightning round of some of the movies that I have seen this year up to this point. Okay. Lightning round of some of the films that have come out over the last uh, few months. Uh, the Batman, too long. Good film, not good Batman movie. I, I just had no interest. I, I, I'm batman out. Yeah. Not unless you bring back Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just ridiculous that people go, oh, another Spider Man? That's too many Spider Man. What? Spider-Man? I'm so confused. Oh, man. I can't wait to go to the movies to go see the eighth Batman. Yeah. It just, just seems a bit unfair. The Lost City. Cute. Fun. Old school romantic comedy adventure. The ending made no fucking sense. Uh, X. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But with Ford. And it's okay. Fun. And it's a fun movie. Not an original idea. Hey, let's do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but with 70s porn. And that's basically the entire film. Not that that's a bad thing. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Morbius, it should have came out in 2003. If it came out in 2003, I think people would go, oh, this is pretty good. It's coming out now. It's the wrong time for it to come out, and it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't really, I don't like what Sony is, like... Sony's just doing weird shit with the Spider-Verse. Like, how the fuck does Madame Web warrant her own movie? I, I, think, I think a large portion of the problem with Morbius that I haven't heard anybody talk about is the fact that it was supposed to come out before No Way Home. Yeah, this is true. But then, but then the pandemic delayed everything with shit. We're going to have to redo portions of this film now because the entire Marvel landscape has changed and now what are we supposed to do? So they ended up redoing it in ways that kind of made it a bit wonky and dumb and stupid. And now they're just panicking because the other Marvel movies came out before the one that was supposed to come out before it, so the timing is all fucked up. So each time it got fucked up. Yes. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't seen it. I, I I'll I'll accidentally see it sooner or later at some point in my life. And you know, I, I'm I'm leaving it up I'm leaving it up to the universe to to tell me when is it when is the right time. The right time when the stars are properly aligned for me to see the Morbius movie. So I'm thinking next Friday. <laughs> yeah. I loved it just because I'm a Marvel mark and that's all there is to it. Other than that, I, I'm liking it less and less as I think about it. Pretty gory for a PG-13 film. I, I feel that for some young people... Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness could be their generation, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. 
Oh, we're running out of time. This meeting is ending in 10 minutes. Yes, and a lot of it was was fan service. And I also feel that uh, not enough credit goes to the real hero here because uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse walked so that Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness could run. Yeah. She had two mothers in the comic books too, right? Because I'm not really familiar with her. Yeah, because I really get like like I I was like like that does not seem like a Sam Raimi move. Okay, I mean like I like Sam Raimi, and I'm sure he's a decent, wonderful person, and I'm sure that anything he may have been in his youth. He has he has learned and he has outgrown, but but both Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, if I had a vote, I I, I would say that in their younger days they called inanimate object gay. Yeah. You know, I mean, I could just totally see those two hanging out, talking about how the new Volkswagen is gay or or something like that. No dark man. It's it's kind of cool. Everybody out on Twitch can see that the Zoom meeting is running out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they're sending they're sending that directly into the feed. So. <laughs> To find the car, yeah. Floating in the air in a swirling vortex of doom. And it's like, okay, I had to watch it twice, but like, there's the freaking car. Okay, the car that Sam Raimi puts in everything. It is in there. The Northman, a beautiful Viking art film that I'll never see again. It's the, it's the Green Knight all over again. What a beautiful film, a work of art. Incredible, a masterful film. Now that I've seen it once, I don't have to see it again. I have the Green Knight, and I like have forgotten to watch it. It's a beautiful film, and I loved it. I'm see it again. Yeah. It's a, it's a work of art, and you can see it once, and you can say, "There you go, I've seen it." Yeah. It's a great film, but I'll probably never see it again. Firestarter, the Morbius of Stephen King movies. If I was Stephen King, I'd be ashamed that they made this. He made Maximum Overdrive. He has no shame. Maximum Overdrive at least was like dumb in a fun way. His fire started just dumb in a dumb way. Yeah. Uh, Uncharted. You talking about the dude? You talking about the dude who took a paycheck for Lawnmower Man? And that fucking short story was only one page long. Lawnmower Man, that's right. Uh, so let's not go talking about Stephen King and shame. <laughs> Uncharted, not a great movie, not a good movie, but fairly entertaining and better than the last Indiana Jones movie. <clears throat> okay, see now I'm confused. I'm confused between that one and the other one that you saw. Which is the Sandra Bullock one? 
Or are they both Sandra Bullock ones? The Lost City is the Sandra Bullock one. Uncharted is the one that's based on a video game. With Tom Holland. Spider-Man. Right, okay. It's not a good movie, it's not a great movie, but it's better than The Crystal Skull. Yes. So, <coughs> everything, everywhere, all at once, the best movie of the year. If anyone says any differently, I will fight you. It was a very good movie. We watched it last night. Don't know what it was about. I'm going to have to watch it a, a few more times, and I goddamn plan to. But I want to point out something about that fucking movie. That movie, they owe me money. They owe me... I invented cock foo. Cock -foo. You have googly eyes. You have... But I invented cock foo. They owe me money. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. They owe you a paycheck. That's right. So, I saw it in theaters two and a half times. Because the last time I saw it, the movie was interrupted by a tornado. Oh! Hey, Oklahoma! Yeah! When the wind comes, rushing down the plane. About the multiverse? Well, you, you're talking to Colorado where it's been snowing since Friday. That's crazy. It's May. Yeah? Yeah, when I woke up, it was 49 degrees. I, I was blown away by that. Mm hmm. Thick leggings to church. 49? Oh, no. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just scraped 20 inches of snow off my car yesterday morning. Ugh. Uh, so, yeah, so that's our intro. That's our monologue. And we should wrap it up because we have two minutes and 45 seconds until Zoom kicks us off. Yes. Before we, before we get to the historic approximation. Uh, is that where we're going to next? Yes. Okay. I'm hitting the technical. I should have prepared something.